Hello guys, today I want to show you how to make this effect in Blender. It's an animated effect I found on YouTube. It's from a show, I will put it on screen right now. And uh, I just saw it and wanted to recreate it and now I want to show you how I made it. And if we take a look inside the camera, it's, it's a really cool like close-up effect. And I think I came really close to the actual result. So, without further ado, let's go get into it. Start by deleting everything in your scene. Go to Add, Mesh, Plane. Scale it by the x-axis by 2.5. Go into Edit Mode, Ctrl R to make a loop cut. Place the root cut and right click. Now go down to this menu and make it 25. Do the same for the other side, except this time it should be 63. Now you will have a lot of squares. Go into your modifier tab and add a wireframe modifier. Go out of edit mode to see what you've made. Press Ctrl A and apply the scale. And now you have an even tile. To get the edges, press boundary. And to get a nice effect later, press relative. Now set the thickness to 0.1 and that makes a nice effect. You can use my settings or you can tweak them as, as you like. Now we want to make a cloth simulation. So go down into the physics properties and add a cloth. I found these settings to work the best. If you use tension 1, compression 500, shear 0, bend 1, then you get a really nice effect. Keep the damping as it is and change the quality to something higher. This number should be as high as your computer can handle. I'll use 25 when I preview and I'll use 100 for the final render. Now if we press play, it will fall down. We don't want that, so I'll go into field rates and set the gravity to zero. And now it stays in place. I'll change the quality step so we have a faster render. The reason why it's so slow right now is because the wireframe is on top of the cloth inside our modifier step. We need it to be the opposite, so drag them around and you'll see the animation go a lot faster. I'll change my, I'll change my quality steps back to 25 because my computer can handle it like this. If we zoom in now, nothing is really happening and that's a good thing, but we also need to change the collisions. I'll set the distance to the lowest possible and I'll set the quality to something higher. I'll start with five and I'll probably uh, make it higher as we go on. Now we need to make so that the edges is not like uh, stiff in place. Now we'll make the cube which is interacting with our cloth. So go into mesh, now add a cube, scale it down, go into edit mode, control B to bevel. I'll bevel the edges, give it some roundness, I'll shade smooth, and then I'll just animate, it, uh, animate a simple sequence. Go to the first frame, press I, location, Go to 60, move it up, and press location. Now if we play, nothing happens. It's because we need to apply a collision to the cube. So it knows it has to collide with our cloth. And now we have a collision. Uh, we don't want our edges to follow the cube. We want them to stay in place. So what we're going to do is we're going into edit mode and select all our edges, holding down control, going into this menu, and then add it to a vertex group. I'll add it with a weight of 0.85, as it makes a nice effect at the edges, so that when it moves up, it doesn't stay at the edge, but it moves in a little. But first we need to add our vertex groups as a pinned group, so under shape, pin your vertex group. And now, you'll see that it stays in place, but we still have a little stretching in it, and I think it looks good. Now I want to animate the cube so we have an effect like the one I showed you at the beginning. I'll just do it quickly, so maybe it should go up like here and rotate. I'll press location and rotation and down here I will move it back to like something like this. Set my quality steps to 50 and set my collision quality to 15 and then I'll go under cache and press bake. And now we're done. Let's play the animation. and we get very much the like it effect. So now we're going to add a camera and the camera is going to have a position just at the top of the cube. So I'll make this 90, zero, zero, not 90, nine, yeah, like this. Move it up so it's just at the top of the cube. Go into the camera and set the focal length to 12 or something. 
adjust it so that you can see as much as you want. I want it to be a bit further back. You want the cube to seem like it's just right on your face and that's the trick we're doing right now. But we also want it to not stick out of the frame. So that's the balance. So I'm just moving in and out of the, in and out of the camera and trying to make the effect as I want. So I actually want it to be more away from the camera. Maybe like this. And I'll change the resolution so that I want it to be like 15. I think that works best. And then I just want to move my camera up and down until I get a match. And I think I'll go with... You can also just move the cube, but then you have to change the keyframes. And I don't want that. So I'll just make it a bit wider. So I like this. Not perfect, but it'll get the job done. And you can always tweak it as you want later. Now we'll have to make the uh, material for our mesh. So go into shading. I'll just close this down. We don't need that and we don't need this. I'll go into render view, add a material. I'll name it glow. And now you have to make the material as I show. So to get an effect that when it sticks out, it lights up like it's getting energized by the cube. We want to add a texture coordinate so we can control how far out is the strength of the emission shader we're going to add. And we're also adding a mapping node so we can choose so we can choose what direction we want. And then we choose a separate XYZ. So we only get it on the Z axis. And the Z axis we're going to plug into a color ramp. And the color ramp will plug into an emission shader. I'll just delete this into the color. And now, if we take a look, nothing really happened. I set the strength to 10 and nothing happens again. But if we pull up this, it still seems like nothing happens. And it's because we need to take object. And now you see the effect. So when it go, so when it goes out, we get a light. That makes sense. You get it. Now set the linear to B spline so you get a more faded look. And adjust the black as you want. I want it to be a bit gray. So you're always able to see it. If it's completely black, it, it will blend in with the background. You can do that. But I will keep it a bit gray. I will turn on bloom. And you can see only our object sticking out will be bloomed. And then I'll go into world and turn the strength down to zero. And now we have the desired effect. I'll make the gray a bit darker. Like this. Really nice. And for the cube, I'll just add an RG. A RGB node and make it black and plug it into the surface. So now the cube will always be black no matter where you see it from, just as our background. And the final thing we're going to do is to set up our render settings. The sampling is just going to stay as it is. I'm going to change the file format to AVI and that's it. And then I'll choose a location I want to save it. And now the only thing you have to do is to render it out. So press render and render animation. And because we're using Eevee, this is going to be fairly quick.